Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Nick, um, and this is the custom tail light for the Acura Integra. Um, I think it's called the DC2. I'm not sure. You guys can correct me on that. Um, this is the USD, USDM one. So this one does come with the turn signal, I think. Um, as you can see, it's a little cracks here. As you can see, it's kind of like in a used condition. But we can, we'll can, we try our best to remedy that with silicone as well. Um, so without further ado, let's show you guys the light demonstrations and how, all their features. All right. All right. Okay guys, so here's the tail lights for the Acura Integra. As you can see, they're nice and diffused looked. Um, I wanted to do that just so it gives it a little bit more modern look. Um, it looks a lot more better on person, uh, but here are all the lights as if they're all on. We have the reverse, like I said, the reverse right here on the white. Then we have this running light, which is our two bars here. So as you can see, we have the all the lights here. Um, we have the reverse, the running light and brake light right here. Those are actually two different uh, sections. So, and then here is our turn signal. Nice diffused look. Um, yet again, this is more like orange. It's a lot more blown out than it is. But uh, let's go ahead and show you guys individually, as if this tail light were to function. So that just goes on and off like that, as if you were turn signaling. Okay. Okay, so here is the brake light on the bottom as you can see. I went with a different approach with using the LED strip on the lens. It gives it a nice bright look. Okay. That is the brake light and here is the running light. So this is what you would see um, if you saw those tail lights at night or just running around, you know. Okay, nice bar diffused look. And for the reverse, there's the reverse lights. Nice and bright, more of a more of like a purple, but it does tell you that you're reversing. So, okay. And there is one more shot of all of them together. Nice and the kind of modern look. Um, this is what we're going to be building today. So go ahead and stay tuned. Alright guys, so this is the lights we are going to build today and I'm going to show you step by step on how I did it and how easy you can do it uh, for some tail lights like this. Um, yeah, there's other designs that I could do. Basically, I just followed the way that the lenses were made. So we have like three different sections here for each bulb, which can be good. Um, again, the lenses are kind of like, you know painted to the way it is so I can't put turn signal here all the way through so um, either that you would need to get a clear lens and then you would have access to RGB but for a basic um, look you know modernized look these are the option you want to get um, again these were my top priority back in the day I just wanted to make these and here we are so they look pretty awesome uh, they are definitely a different uh, way of building them so let's go ahead and get to it okay guys to get started on your custom tail lights for the Acura Integra first you're gonna need a tail light um, you can get these anywhere <laughs> I mean if you have spares but um, here it is this is a basic two-door version again this is a pre 2000s tail light so the lens and the housing are actually come apart um, as you can see here. So this is the inside of an Acura Integra. 
uh, tail light. As you can see, we do have that amber lens right there, continuing on. We have the red as well as the reflector, and we have the reverse right here. So, like I said, um, it's not like other lights where, like my on, my on my Eclipse is all red, so I can do any color basically, except for RGB. So this is the inside. It's a little bit dirty because it is a junkyard light. So I couldn't find any else to get this. So that's also an option. Next, we have the inside of the light lens. So this is the inside of an Acura Integra light. Um, again, we have the three separate sections, like we said. And then, zooming in here, have the, I think this is a, also a running light as well as you can also paint it black, chrome, whatever you need to to get that kind of desired look. Um, this is the approach that we're going to use today. Um, here are the templates what we use. Here is the reverse. As you can see, it's a very nice diffuse look um, as well as the black acrylic there. This is what the back looks like. So that's basically it. So this will allow light to go through only through the, the sections there. As you can see my finger there. Um, it will only allow light through these white areas so that's the reverse and there's the running light and brake light one as you can see it's a very uh, simplistic but it's also effective uh, look to it as you can see got the running lights on the top these two bars that was gonna run your 12 volts and then we have the brake light here and then here is the turn signal as you can see okay and again light is only going to show up through here as you can see so those are our three kind of like lens diffusers for the lights um, this this whole thing right here can be changed to a different design as well uh, I don't have to use reverse white I can use like a other RGB stuff so that's what's cool um, this is the basic this is the basic you can get to where get the design that you want and then it'll output pretty nicely so alright so let's go ahead and go in into the taillight lens see what we need to do and start building these lights alright guys so before doing anything else to the lens we're gonna have to clean it up as you can see it's a little bit dirty on the inside um, and inside the lens so we'll go ahead and clean that up and we'll get back to you guys so just use some degreaser as well just use a purple power degreaser that would be great or soap and water nothing too harsh on the lenses and again we're dealing with you know 25 30 year old cars you know if you have an older lens it's just impossible to find it or you just run the risk of cracking it so just use a normal you know safe the greaser again soap and water works just as fine all right guys Here's all the materials that you need, well, some of them, <laughs> the majority of all the tools and equipment you need to make custom lights. So here we have some wire cutters, this you can get, you know, Home Depot Lowe's, just make sure you get the right gauge, as you can see, this is an indented one, goes from 18 to what, 24, 20, 28, you want to get a very good range of that, just in case. Um, next we have these. Uh, flush cutters you can get these at like again Home Depot and Harbor Freight stuff like that and these have a very flat blade on it so when you're cutting zip ties you know cutting you know wires for the LED strips you want to make sure it's flat and crisp and clean um, next we have the wire strippers these are two-step wire strippers but you can get also get automatic ones as well also get crimping ones as well so here is just my choice 
as you can see um, I don't really need to get into de that much detail here but here it is here is the head part of it as you can see it grips the wire here okay grips the wire there and it cuts at the same time when you're pulling apart so it grabs it there pulls it down oh that was supposed to go down too so there boom boom and pulls it apart basically creates that gap um, that you see in the majority of lights here um, moving down the list we have the soldering here's our three wire for our RGB stuff but just wanted to include it just in case you guys don't know this is really useful especially if you want to get to smaller gauges and you just want to just wire them together those are really good as well as just wiring into these little divots here this is just Harbor Freight foam tape or double sided double sided sticky tape you can use this for anything for uh, adhesion on the LED strips as well just normal duct tape masking tape and as well when you're doing wiring you got to have that electrical tape so just get a lot of electrical tape if you can um, moving down the list we have the LED strips so you can get you know all sorts of LED strips as well there's just one um, the ones I use specifically for mine are 5050 SMDs which are really bright and really packs a punch if you can get one that's if you get a strip that can get it to where it's just um, really close together as you can see that's all you really need maybe you need some resistors some diodes stuff like that make sure you get a good mat too this is Walmart by the way uh, yeah so let's go ahead and get those lights and get to wiring all right guys also forgot uh, just get, get yourself a knife or a, some type of hobby knife as well you know that's also good also a lighter just to keep things uh, lit okay. so yeah let's go and get the light Alright guys, just like that, we just finished all of the lights. As you can see, they're really nice. Um, I took a couple more pictures here, and they look awesome. And now, we, now we're going to go ahead and put the lens back on. And yeah, they look just like the other one. So, let's get on to that. So, I always test every time I put back the lens. But um, yeah, here's all the lights working perfectly fine. Um, Again, they're kind of like weird on camera, but trust me, it's a nice diffusion right here on the turn signal as well. So yeah, everything seems to be working fine. So we're just going to go ahead and get ready for the lens and the housing to mate. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and put the lens on. So again, you want to make sure that your inside of the lens is all clean and looks pretty clean to me. So we're ready to put it back on, especially if there's a screw here, there's a screw I forgot. So we're gonna go take that off real quick. All right, so once you take off that screw, everything else should be fine. Um, you wanna make sure when you, when you do press this on, you wanna make sure that you have an even pressure, just sometimes it can crack and that, et cetera, but nothing so dramatic just like the other one. But again, you're dealing with a very old taillight, you know, even older if you, if you have an older generation, but Let's go ahead and do this. So before I do that, I usually put some gloves on usually because I don't want to burn myself. Heat up the sides so that the glue of the housing will actually melt together. So we're gonna go ahead and heat up the sides, all right? And then get ready for the lens to go on. So let's go ahead and do that. That's why 
I do it upside down just so like I can get a better angle on it. So that this side of it. There we go. Okay. Just wanna even even heat. Flip it back up, make sure you orient it the lens the right way. It only goes on one way, so you, know, you can't really mess it up. So we're gonna go ahead, position it, and just plop it on there. As you can see, it's already going into place, so we're just gonna have to keep working it in. Get on this, all these areas here. Yep. Oh, in place. <laughs> all right. Keep heating it up and pushing it down. As you can see, the 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 template actually, or the light diffusion panels, are actually getting a lot more closer to the lens. So that's good. Just gonna have to keep on working this. to this point um, you can see the gap kind of close in there's a little bit more gap here but um, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and bust out our clamps and make sure that you get these kind of clamps too they're kind of stronger for like wood Heat this up again and then just keep pressing down. And then the pressure, the pressure from the clamps will actually help it press down. So for this line here, I'm going to add a little silicone. As you can see, it's still popping out. Uh, we're going to add a little silicone right there. So Everybody knows the silicone I use. I say it every time. There you go. That's what the towel is for. <laughs> and just put it in there. And then when we squeeze on it, it's gonna spill out a little bit, but it makes sure that's on there together. All right. I usually like wipe it clean here, even though it's gonna get bulging out again, but get yourself some more clamps like these. Okay, start right here, press that down. Alright, second one. Middle. Okay. And third. And there you go. Alright guys, let me show you a little bit in depth on what I did there again you want to use you want to start on the ones that have the tabs first so like it locks in the tabs um, then after that you can use whatever else to support it with so pretty much this seam is there gone you can see that and add a little bit more pressure here but it should be pretty good um, as well as the other side there as you can see it's pretty good uh, nothing really cracked this is actually the better side, so I should, so they look pretty nice. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, doing these are awesome, you know. Just waiting for the final result and seeing it in people's cars is awesome. So, if you guys want this pair, I think it's gonna be for sale. So go ahead and message me. 
if you guys want a custom set made go ahead and mess me again um, I can hook you guys up so uh, hope you guys enjoy the video and that is how you make your custom tail lights um, if not I can provide a little video of how they look like but that's about it hope you guys enjoy the video peace <laughs>